Uh, good evening, everybody. It's uh, February the 2nd, 2021, and I'll bring this regular meeting of council to order. Result of the agenda for the February 2nd, 2021, regular meeting of council be adopted as amended. The addition of discussion about the arena and to receive the resignation letter were added. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Gray. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Number three, resolve the minutes of the January 19, 2021 regular council meeting, the January 26, 2021 committee of the whole meeting, and the February 1, 2021 special meeting be approved. Moved by Councilor Delorier, second by Councilor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. <clears throat> I didn't know if you had something there, Councilor Gray, or not. So. I <clears throat> made the point before. I'm not going to labor the audience. It's all good. Okay, okay. Thank you. Number four. Uh, tonight we have uh, we have a delegation uh, by Mr. Derek Eagleman and Mr. Kyle Mahan uh, presenting uh, on the idea of the Swan River Bike Park. Uh, gentlemen, welcome to council here tonight. And uh, you know, you're, you, there is a time limit, so try to keep to the points, and, and then we'll maybe have a little bit of short discussion afterwards. And then council will have a chance uh, down the road or whatever to further discuss this idea. Okay, so I'll turn it over to you. Okay, so thanks very much for allowing us to come speak to you tonight. I want to start out very clearly so that you have an understanding of what we're looking for from the town square. So at this point, um, we are hoping to, our goal tonight is seeking the town square help in acquiring land for the purpose of a future bike park and or pump track within the town square limits. So what is pump track? We will get into that. Who are we? Uh, we are a uh, the, the Swan Valley Cycle Coalition is a group of volunteers. Um, we are looking to serve the community through our love of cycling, and we want to share that with others. Uh, one of the main reasons that this has become it's kind of more at the forefront of our interest is the fact that the government of Manitoba is seeing a lot of tourism and a lot of growth through cycling, and they've been spending a lot of money on different communities, helping them build up trails, bike parks, and things like this. And there's been quite a few grants made available even just this spring. Part of it was COVID, part of it is also uh, strictly towards the cycling tourism of Manitoba. <coughs> and we're hoping to acquire some land so that we would be able to put ourselves in a position to access those grants. So, uh, what is a pump track? There is a few pictures which will probably explain that a little better to you. Um, basically, a pump track is a series of low-level rollers that you can ride your bike across without having to actually pedal. So the momentum of your body going up and down will actually push you across these rollers, and they're usually in a circular form. The benefits of a bike park slash pump track is it doesn't necessarily need to be on any type of a slope. It doesn't need to be on a large space of land. A pump track can be built indoors, a pump track can be built outside, it can be on a hill slope, it can be on a flat ground. Because we are in Manitoba and a lot of places are very flat, a pump track is ideal for some place where we don't necessarily have a big grade. A bike park is a little more of a graded area where you need to have a lot of speed, where a pump track is very safe, they're not a very large area that you need to use, and in general, they are a simpler build. Um, so the do we have some pictures or just to kind of show you? There you go. So that kind of helps explain what we're looking at. Uh, it can become more beautiful or less beautiful with time. Obviously, there are asphalt, there are concrete, there are precast. Um, there's a a lot of ways of building a pump track, and there's a lot of different costs and expenses and different values that you can place on your particular area. We at this point are really looking to see if we can 
work towards finding an area, and then we can work with the designer to come up with a uh, possible budget. Um, the most interesting thing that we kind of found coming across pump tracks, and, and especially Manitoba, is that a lot of communities are looking to leverage these pump, pump tracks to draw visitors from far and wide. A lot of people come already to come to the skate park, and we know that people that come for a day trip, then it turns into a vacation, then a vacation turns into looking to maybe make it more permanent and reside in the area. So a pump track's not only part of a local chance to you know give young people and everybody really some healthy options, uh, it also is a really good way of looking to maybe boost some economy through local tourism and the government of Manitoba is, is really looking to push push the trails. Hi, that, there's a little video, I don't know, I think it's about 30 or 40 seconds, just give you an idea of what a build would, would look like. One of the hardest things is obviously where do you put something like this. Um, we have a site in particular that we're thinking of. been kind of thought of 
this is something we'd like to get a professional to build. So it's not something that we would, even though it's just dirt, it's not something that we want to just push over. There would be some cost to it. We could go out there ourselves and try and make it, but we would like to have somebody come in. So if we're talking $100,000 or something in there, we don't want to scare anybody because we don't need that number right now. Like if we really wanted to, I've done it in my yard, but it's just not at that same level where we have a professional designer. But it is uh, it is something that once you put it there, if you said, well, something is supposed to already go there, then we wouldn't want to just push it over. It is uh, more movable than concrete, but it's still dirt that's been shaped by professionals and things like that. The, the reason that it makes a difference, I guess, is obviously when things are are done by professionals and you spend a little more money, it generally will draw people to come to it. Uh, if we did something just locally, which still would be awesome, we don't necessarily have that same availability to say, come try out our park built by boots or come try out our park built by whoever. It's, uh, it would eventually get there, but it's more of a word mouth thing. So we're looking to have a professional work with us and uh, build that. Okay. That's, all my, that's all my pitch I got there. Okay. Um, Derek maybe has something more to put in there. There's a few pictures further along, just kind of showing like rough diagrams a little further there. Yeah, so you can kind of see it doesn't have to be huge. It basically you're going around and around and around in circles. You think, how much fun can that be? Well, the skate park's been there I don't know how long, and those kids just go around and around and around and around like, all day. This is this is times 10 the amount of around and around and around you get out of this one. It's, it's really good. And if you're thinking, I would never use this, chances are you would go out there. This is a very, this does not, you don't have to be at a certain economic status to use this. Everybody has a bike. It's a free access thing. It's, it's very easy to get on this and have fun. Definitely there are levels. It's the thing that you're not gonna, first day you're not gonna go out there and say, I've done it, I'm done. Those guys that ride that skate park every day and get better and better, they will go out here and ride this every day and get better and better. And there'll be progression and there'll be you'll be out there, Lance, trying it. It's 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 extremely fun. You wouldn't make believe it today you tried it, but it's uh, yeah, you'll definitely be smiling if you're out there going. Yeah. Okay, and I didn't realize the workout that you get from some of this is not really familiar with them until I started looking into it. And uh, there is a graph in there, I don't know if you guys saw it. Uh, so we did a little kind of comparison to some other sports and just the amount of fitness you get from from spending half an hour, an hour on pump track is, is right up there with some of your high intensity sports. So I think it'd be great for the fitness level of our, of our um, residents. And it also is really quickly skill building. So we do have the mountain bike club and the trails at Thunder Hill. Some people can't necessarily get there super easily. It's a 30 minute drive, you have to put bikes up. So this is something that you can go on and get the same amount of skill building. You can go up to Thunder Hill for two and a half, three hours, you get the same amount of skill development in 30 minutes on a pump track. You're constantly working, you're constantly learning how to roll, you're constantly on a pump. So it's another asset to kind of also encourage people to try out Thunder Hill as well. Hi, <coughs> <Okay>, sorry. <coughs> back up to that other video. It's back a few slides. Um, don't keep going back. That was the one I was thinking of. Yeah, so this hopefully we'll start in the right spot. This just shows the, an event that the same park is running. And it shows the fun that the kids are having and the, and the residents are having. Grand Williams make your writing clear and concise, no matter where you are. It should play in that PowerPoint, so I'm sorry guys. This is, uh... Here we are, Oak Mountain State Park, very first. You can go to the middle and you'll kind of see uh, they have their first contest. Thank you. 
So it's all kinds of age groups, all kinds of levels of riders, all kinds of bikes. Okay. <clears throat> well, thank you. Um, I guess I could open up for any questions uh, from any member of the council at all. Councilor so you identified the one potential spot that you you have your eye on. I guess is there any other spots around town? You know, a backup spot that you guys had your eye on, or or you, you had your hearts pretty set on the on that one spot. <laughs> really, beggars can't be choosers. It's really not. The thing that we like about that is it's you kind of have to have a water source to pack these. So because they are dirt, eventually they will wear just with time. And having a water source close by allows you to pack this clay properly and hardens. Um, also, we like the visibility, just because it generally draws youth to it. It's nice to have something where there is a little bit of light and uh, visibility from highway visibility for people using the wellness center. It kind of just maybe adds to that atmosphere, and it, it will help encourage people to use it in a healthy way. Where if we hit it in a corner somewhere, it's uh, like I, I always like to think the best, but it's just it's just a little harder to keep people honest when there's too many dark corners. Um, a couple of other sites we were, like, we look long and hard, and really, if you guys have something that you think would work for us, we'd be very excited to hear about it. Um, beside the Jubilee Fields, there is kind of an open spot ahead of the baseball mounds. And through the rumor mill we heard, I'm not positive, the street there, where Finishes the or whether some land was donated over in the Bay Area for recreational purposes that was never developed for that. Or park drive there. Yeah, so there's a few spots. The problem with that is there's no infrastructure there, so we don't have water and uh, no washrooms or anything like that. Well, in the center, you had to, there's, there's washrooms there, so it kind of would be nice for that. Soccer fields, same kind of thing we thought, other than. It's not necessarily a 365 visibility there. It's kind of more soccer nights, crazy busy from five to seven, but otherwise maybe a little lighter. So we just thought it was a reasonable <coughs> location. Council um, Morio. Two other potential sites that I just thought at the top of my head. Um, I don't know if you've considered them already, if they're actually big enough without going out there with a, a meter stick and that case. Like, where the old Kinsman pool was right in front of the arena there. Um, uh, that might be sufficient as an option. It's pretty cool idea. Um, or um, at the wellness site, but uh, right, right in the front where those gardens are, that sometimes there's poor uptake on the gardens. But I don't know, utilizing in that area, if that might be an option or something. We don't get in the way of anybody's gardening. I'll leave that up to you. <laughs> <laughs> like honestly, we we strongly feel that if we had to, we'd go there ourselves and start pushing some dirt around, and kids would show up and ride. Um, if we had somebody professional come in, we think we'd be able to draw from other communities to come and try it, just because we know that new bike parked up in Nipua. I went and tried that out the next day. Because once you get that that Jones and Corey, you're just going. It's it's awesome. So. That's that's our only thing. We'd like to be. But, like, I agree with like the, the visibility location of it there. It's just that pro your option one there. There's I guess there's things already on on different projects that are potentially there, and I would hate to see investing of a hundred thousand plus, um, and then 10, 15 years down the road, who knows what happens? Exactly. A bulldozer comes. Or sure. uh, yeah. Um, I'd be I'd look, yeah. Or, it wouldn't be impacted by future development. Yeah, yeah. and we suspected this, but at the same time, mm -hmm. shoot for the moon, right? So, I think there would be enough space out front there. Um, really, we were talking to a designer, and he said, well, you gotta get in this space, and then I can just throw something at you. Then you can start applying for these grants. A lot of these guys work with the grant people already, um, so, we're just looking to secure some land or potential land in that moving mm -hmm. forward. Another option that just comes to my mind is like Legion Park, there where the bocce bowlers are still open areas there. Like it's tucked away, but that was our original. Love it. Love it. But 
we have been told time and again and again, everything that wanted to go on Legion Park went to Legion Park. I forget what the saying was, but it was like, no. So, but I mean, honestly, it's a very friendly atmosphere. Um, I guess I don't know if I should even say this, but sometimes I hear some things about the skate park, people are more concerned. Uh, the biking community, this type of thing, I think will even be much more lighthearted than the skateboard side of things. Um, I, I, I personally am never intimidated to go to the skate park, but I know that a few people say sometimes older kids get there and whatever, whatever. Bike parks in general, everybody's there, from a two-year-old to a 92-year-old. Because bikes are a lot more age range. I don't know a lot of people that are 55 riding a skateboard, right? It just doesn't, it doesn't even sound fun. Yeah, at my age, I to feel like, that's why I'm into biking, because it's like, I'm too old now, like it hurts. Where this is something that's much more achievable at any age, like from two years old, you're not gonna bust your teeth out, all the way to 92. So it's a, it's a little different, different atmosphere. It's very family, very family. Council White. I just, uh, we, we did a, a walk along the new one in Dauphin, it was like 1.5 million there. There must have been 300 people there on a Sunday just wandering around, walking around, like people from all over the province. I love the concept, uh, hopefully we can do something, I can't speak for thoughts, but thank you guys for uh, initiating it, and uh, hopefully we can do something with you, for you, for us, it's not for you, it's for the, for the community. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll come, okay, go ahead, Councilor Grant. Is there a capital plan or an operational um, business plan to show what the cost of operations are or what, what you're expecting from the town of Swan River in terms of capital contributions? Yeah, unless you're, you're not expecting anything, in which case that's, that's probably the best. Well, yes, so that, that's kind of what I'm talking to Derek about quite a bit, about quite a bit, quite a bit. The skate park, in my mind, is relatively cost free. Um, you do have some maintenance area picking up garbage and things like that. As far as the park itself, it's a 25 year lifespan on it. Uh, so concrete doesn't necessarily deshape, doesn't necessarily even thaw. There isn't as much movement in concrete as there would be in dirt. This park would have to be maintained and it would probably have to be maintained by a service club of some kind. If the Swan Valley Cyclists Coalition did not exist and we were not maintaining it, um, I think it would be a bit more of a burden for sure. If there was somebody on the town that said, we're gonna go out there for two hours every month, that, that'd be probably easily attainable. Um, but it'd have to be kind of an invested interest People that we're talking to are talking about, you know, when you build these, we want to work with you, we want to show you how to maintain them, how to do it. So just send anybody out there wouldn't be as effective as sending out somebody specialized. So it does, it, it, it concerns everybody when you have a, it's not as tangible to say, anybody just go out there and mow the grass. You kind of got to have an invested interest and it's uh, got to be supported by the community, I think, a little more than necessarily the town of Swan River having to maintain. Obviously, the area around it, there was a few garbage cans and some grass cutting. Excellent. The trail itself, I think, would be a little more of that volunteer involvement. And as for dollars and stuff right now, uh, we don't have those figures just because before we wasted anybody's time, your guys' time, the builders' time, uh, we just wanted to make sure that this was something that happened and we had a place to actually build. And then these guys can tell us, you know, what you can expect for maintenance wise and cost wise and time wise. And, um, so then we can get more into that. They're pretty adamant about get some land because they've done this a thousand times. You don't have any land, you just got no traction. So they said that that's really where we got started. They have a lot of examples. This park was done in 2018, this park was done in 2019, this park was done in 2020. So, but they said, really, how big a space we got to work with. I like, I like the idea and, and the presentation. Um, definitely, I had question in my mind the same thing as far as the capital and, and all that. And, and, and I guess, you know, because if it's in the infancy stages of everything right now, 
then there's a lot of what is and, and so forth, right? And also some opportunities for you to be, you know, partnering also with some service clubs and so forth, you know, like what you did when you uh, organized the um, skate park as well. <clears throat> so there might be some opportunity there, but definitely we, we have to be looking at a little bit more about that and, and, and see what would end up costing us, you know, if, if there is something there, unless the, the group is looking at grants and, and fundraising basically uh, 100% or majority of the, the capital for it. And if your ask is then just the uh, maintenance and all that afterwards, then we have to obviously know what that looks like. So um, the property that you're asking for or looking for is 100 by 40 meters. Is that, did I hear that correctly? That's what I got on Google. Okay. Uh, Deputy Mayor with Tony Wong. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mahan, Mr. Henkelman. Thank you for the presentation. Um, I, I really like the idea of, of opportunities for young people, and I do value your opinions on believing, like I do, that tourism is a is a big industry, and that there are a lot of dollars out there um, to to drive tourism and to drive guests into our community. So, kudos for um, viewing that and seeing that um, as a valuable piece to our community. I guess uh, the only the couple of concerns I have, um, Mr. Mahan, Mr. Henkelman, is, is uh, um, not necessarily the location, but knowing what you want or what you're looking for from the town in terms of, of what that might look like in the future. And I think that um, a few other councillors mentioned that, but um, just looking w down the road as to um, you know, once a piece of property is gifted or whatever the case may be. Um, and then, of course, granting is available. There's all types of grants. There's different service clubs that uh, are willing to put invest funds into it. Um, you look at uh, this, the uh, federated co-op that donated $100,000. <clears> plus to the Dauphin area for their bike trails and, and things like that. So there are um, no doubt in my mind that there is the uh, capital funding for it. Just having a plan of what that maintenance looks like down the road, who's going to do that. Um, and in the event that, uh, you know, your, your club might cease to exist at some point, who's left with that and, and what would that look like? So those are, that's the questions I have. Um, but otherwise, I, I I know that you will do very well with uh, coordinating this and providing more information as we go. So kudos to you, and I look forward to seeing the results. Yeah, so we definitely, like, they do have a maintenance plan where they would come out or somebody trained, especially for this. I don't know if there is somebody in Manitoba that is trained to maintain these. Uh, so we definitely ask them that just get a better actual dollar figure on okay professional came out here and did maintenance of this twice a year what does that look like um it is a big concern for me too if all of a sudden we don't make it home tonight then who's going to pick up the rake and start shoulding those, those those back together so it's definitely a valid opinion it's something that we do definitely have in the back of our minds and um I guess there's just a little bit of a little bit gray with that maintenance side. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> well, if there's nothing else, uh, we can also do it. So, so, ju so just so we're clear, what you're you're looking for uh, confirmation on the land before you move ahead with you know design and answering some of those other questions, correct? Be happy to answer any questions. Don't need land to answer questions. Yeah. We we can ask them, but, but um, the land will definitely. There's a bunch of Manitoba Trails grants becoming available and if we don't have a plan we can't apply for them and if we don't have a location a specific location you can't even send it in so we're looking for the town of swan river us to apply on behalf of the town of swan river we don't want to own the land we still want you to own the land but, uh, but, but it's hard to make, what you're saying is it's hard to make that plan if you don't know where you're putting the thing to know what your physical constraints are going to be are pretty Look, guys, we've done this a hundred thousand times. We've talked to a hundred thousand guys that have said, "Hey," and if they don't have land, 
nothing happens. We're all just busy. So please secure your land so that we can actually help you before you waste your time, you waste everybody's time, get some land, secure that. Because it doesn't matter where you build it, we can make you an awesome pump truck. It matters that you have secured the land. So it's, it's kind of catch-22, which uh, they haven't said that negatively, like they haven't been rude about it, but it does make sense. And it kind of always has been, when you fundraise or ask for grants, it's kind of a necessary first step to secure some property. So. Uh, I go back to the skate park. I mean, it was the same process. I was there for that. You guys secured the land before you, before you had costing estimates. I mean, it, it's the same process. So we were waiting yeah. forever for land, and we couldn't figure that out. And then finally, we got that. And then from there, it finally went, and there was a three-year monkeying around. So it definitely, the grant people just can't. I can't give you a loan or sorry, a grant if you don't have property. It just the government won't do that. Okay, it just makes things okay, Councillor White. <clears throat> so it's 100 by 50 meters for the park itself, but obviously you're going to need more space around the side, the periphery, people sit and watch, whatever, lighting would go someday. So what kind of uh, volumes, uh, square footage are you looking at? An acre, two acres? So the actual park itself, I don't see being 100 meters by 100 meters, so like 50 by 100 meters. I would say the whole area. So like you're your availability for your crowd and things like that. The, the wellness center site, there already is some parking there. Um, there's kind of that drainage ditch there. In our minds, we're like, put a sweet culvert in there, a little bridge, they ride over that and then get into the park area. So the actual pump track itself would be a similar to kind of the size of this town office, I would say, like to give something in your head. And then we'd have a few obstacles aside of that, which are extremely beginner all the way to a little more advanced, which are kind of like wood structures that are just known to be at these types of parks so you can try something else. If you're not Do you know the dimensions of that space you're looking at right now? I was actually looking at 200 by 200, like kind of a square shape, feet, feet. That, that's like large in my opinion. That's like, oh. that's what it is I'm thinking. Yeah. You mentioned Nipua, so Nipua has a track similar to this? Nipua, they have four acres of okay. bike park that they just built in this summer. Okay. Yeah. Do you, do you know any other municipalities that have, you know, a pump track? Pump track, you know, that I guess that our administration could maybe talk to their their administration just to, you know, see how it's working for them, see what, see what you know, what, what, was there anything unexpected? Was there any, you know, I guess, I guess you know, municipalities often do that. So, is there? So Russell built one. Russell built one. Okay. Yeah, they did it with their own bike club. Okay. And they did it themselves, so it was very inexpensive, and uh, I think they're happy. Maintenance wise, we're very interesting to hear: is the club showing up and doing the maintenance, or did everybody just care after it was built? Um, yeah, it'd be very interesting. That would that'd be great. I'm even tempted to. Well, maybe they wouldn't give me a straight answer, but uh, they'd probably give you a straight answer real quick. So that would be a great place to start. Dauphin, I know that they have all the trails. They're supposed to be getting two of these tracks within the town limits as well. Um, as far as I know, at this point, they're not built, and I'm pretty confident in that. They could have slipped it in there in the fall. At the Nipua site, there is a pump track there as well. So they have this trail section in the bush, they have a large jump section, and they have a, a small pump track section. And the pump track there is like no way, it's a it's 50 by 50. So it's a small area. Um, they have a large demographic of people there that are interested in mountain biking. And I know that they have a lot of volunteers working with that, so. And it's new, that just happened in, it opened August 1st. So they wouldn't have a lot of, I'm really curious, to, that's why I went to it instantly. I wanted to see it in the spring, or see it when it's first built, see it perfect. And I'm gonna go back as soon as it thaws how did this weather, how, did, how, how are they maintaining it? What are they doing, you know? Because I'm pretty curious, because it, it's a lot of work, and if there's nobody there to do it. It's not, not going to Okay, well, we're gonna have to wrap that up. <clears throat> I'm okay. sure that we'll have an opportunity to uh, discuss this again. You know, council will have a chat about it, <clears throat> probably one of our committee meetings, and then uh, and then we'll chat again after that, okay. so. All yeah. right. 
Thank you so very much. Well, thank you Appreciate guys very much for the presentation and uh, good talking. Yep. Yeah, if you ever want to reach out or you'll have a question, we're more than happy to find that answer. So right now I can hear the maintenance one, so we'll, we'll reach out to them and see if we have some specific data or if they have a community that they would say there's a similar build that we could maybe, or you could or somebody could access information from the community as far as the maintenance goes. Okay. Thanks, guys. 6.1. Yeah. Result of the invoice and report received from the RCMP dated January the 19th, 2021, be received. Moved by Councillor White, yes. seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 6.2. Resolve that the letter from the Swan River Lifeline be received. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Gray. Discussion? No discussion on that? Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 7.1. Resolved that the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Deputy Mayor Tony. Discussion? I guess I should have, uh, should have deleted that agenda of reasonable report. I, I uh, did not let Council know that I would not get my report done. I apologize without your answer any questions you have on Public Works. Council Morio? No, I was just going to say. Okay. Then that's pretty much we're just going to skip that then. There's no, I didn't realize. There's nothing to vote on. We'll have it on our next meeting then. We will. Okay. 721 result of the December 2020 Swan River Handy Transit Van Report be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 722, <clears throat> resolved that the December 2020 Protective Services Report be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <coughs> 723, result of the 2020 Year End Protected Services Report be received. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 7.3, Council reports. I'll start tonight with Councilor Deloria. Um, I had a CD meeting um, last Thursday uh, with uh, uh, an item that I'd like to bring forward in camera if we're going in camera tonight. So I want to inform council of uh, an issue there. Um, the CD. Okay. Uh, I guess they're not, it's not a CD anymore, it's the watershed district, the WD. Um, and uh, other than that, I had no other meetings. Okay. Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I have a few items today, um, but I will start off with, uh, with one f uh, very important uh, item and uh, your worship that is to congratulate you on your 10 years of service uh, as council councillor and and mayor with the town of swan river so congratulations to 10 years of service we appreciate all your efforts on behalf of council and i hope i can speak for the community at large thank you for all your efforts and all the uh, dedicated time that you have put to council all the late meetings all the 
early meetings, uh, time away from your family, and, and uh, uh, we all appreciate that. So thank you very much. Councillor Delorier did present you with that certificate. So can, on behalf of myself, congratulations. And uh, I will uh, move on to my other items. Um, first of all, the airport commission did meet, um, as you'll see further down in the agenda, um, the budget, um, is there and the approval of the budget. Um, I guess another point out of that, I won't really talk a lot about it cause I think we'll discuss it more as the budget comes in later in the agenda. <clears throat> there is just one resolution that the commission did come up with and that is, um, to share with uh, or to be authorized, I guess, to inform our municipalities the desire um, to have the municipalities agree to review the agreement that was dated uh, back in October 2017 um, that established the Airport Commission and to review the Constitution uh, clauses 2, 4, and 5. Um, so hoping that uh, at some point we can take that back to our committee of a whole and and review that other than that with the commission like i said we will discuss the the rest of it and answer any questions um later on in the agenda when it comes comes up unless there are specific questions but i'm sure those will be addressed at at the budget time later in the agenda we also myself and councillor gray had our uh, rise rise economic development meeting um there were two meetings that were had one of more of a uh, planning st strategic planning sort of uh, it was more of a discussion than any planning and then the meeting regular meeting to approve checks and things like that um I think I'll leave that to Councillor Gray to um, follow up with 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 more on that um, when it's his turn to speak. Other than that, I didn't have any other meetings. Once again, congratulations, Your Worship, on ten years, and uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Latoni, uh, Councillor White. Oh, we had a meeting with. Uh, conference meeting with, with CAO and uh, I want to compliment uh, your worship for nudging the Prairie Mountain Health relative to some concerns with funding for some products for the hospital and uh, your worship had concerns that perhaps the town might have to or the community might have to pay for that because of his nudging your nudging sir uh, we chatted at PMH and there's been a letter followed up to you that that's not going to be the case unless of course the foundation wants to do that so I appreciate your bringing that to PMH's uh, attention. Uh, I had the airport commission with uh, Deputy Mayor Rintoni. Uh, absolutely, there's some concerns about funding, how that goes, who pays for what, based on what. And we talked a little bit about rental fees for airplanes also. In our COW meeting on the 26th, uh, one, of the, one of the main topics, as I recall, was how to delineate who co covers what land, what properties for firefighting and for uh, emergency call out. so that's still a work in progress. And we also saw some equipment estimates, and when you look at $850,000, a million dollars for firefighting equipment, obviously uh, it's, it's not a cheap uh, enterprise, so we need all the help we can from our partners. And uh, we also talked about the Rural Water Agreement at that COW meeting, and hoping to work collaboratively with our, our neighbors. Uh, one thing I'd like to suggest, hopefully, with uh, Councillor Mutoni's uh, blessing, Deputy Mayor Mutoni's and Councillor Gray, we have uh, an executive director for Rise. I'd sure like to see that person come to our council and tell us what she's doing and all the wonderful things that are happening. Because I hear great stories, good things are happening. Uh, I would sure like to hear more from her personally. Thank you, Councillor Gray. Well, I won't reiterate the whole meeting, we'll meeting which are in the minutes and which others have described. The rise meetings uh, that we've had have focused on planning, although it was a bit of a wonky meeting, quite candidly, and, and what we drifted a bit. We did end up talking about the changes of the Constitution. There seems to have been some confusion, which was straightened out at the second meeting. 
as well with intended because you, the town will have received a letter as it all these colleagues asking for the appointment of a um, non council member. That was not what I suggested. What we suggested in the Rise Board suggested was that we have a meeting sometime with the three partners. And the logical time is if we're meeting on March 8th to have all of us there to meet either before or after the G5 meeting. But anytime we can get all the partners together to talk about the Constitution. We've now worked out the formula for funding, uh, the budgets, um, and Perhaps the supervision of that board would be better served with a skills matrix based board, which is, um, uh, and then those persons would be put to all the councils and you would have to basically be approved by all of the councils for a period of time and then a, a rotating shift. So we, we, we want to present that. Um, if it's accepted, then we would draft the amendments and pass them to some of the councils. Um, that's the primary part. The secondary part was that there, there's a bit of a strain, I think, in economic development now with COVID and so on. There was um, a question I can tell you from um, the um, economic development officer that apparently some municipalities have turned the monies that came from Canada, from, from the federal government to the municipalities, um, over to economic development officers. Um, and there was some uh, discussion about that. Uh, I think it was not popularly received by any of the municipalities, and certainly from our perspective, uh, I was I, I I wasn't aware that that grant. And I'm going to ask if our administration can check, but I wasn't aware that that grant was intended to be uh, support for businesses. In fact, it's a different stream entirely from the federal government for supports for businesses. There are some provincial streams, and more importantly. I understood the purpose of the municipal grants, um, both in terms of what the federal government pronounced and what we got when we received the grant, as being supports for municipal governments which were going to have reduced revenues and increased costs. So that's what I understood it to be, and we've, we've been applying it in that way, and I thought that was the appropriate thing. But I, I, I bring it to this council's attention simply because it was raised at that council at that meeting. The secondary issue, um, and I'm I'm going to be pleased to tell you, Mr. Uh, Councilor White, that we expect to have um, Lauren come to a, every council around, around here um, over the next while. COVID makes it a little more problematic, and, and she'll do what she can. But um, one of the challenges we have is there's a significant number of businesses across the four communities, and although uh, the Arm Mountain is not currently a member of RISE, we've had some involvement with them. But in a number of those locations, the problem is that you get, we're getting older and older. Um, owners of businesses are having difficulty finding persons who are either in position economically or willing to um, purchase those businesses and take them on. And so that's a challenge that's different than it has been in the past, and that's one of the challenges that RISE is going to look at. And I think it's a challenge that municipal, municipal governments is going to have to look at. Um, so that may be a change. The other thing that I can advise is that um, the Economic Development Officer has assisted, and there's a, it's a, a parkland-wide thing, and you'll recall that we moved our focus to being the gateway to the north as opposed to um, part of the parkland, but the parkland uh, initiative to expand broadband uh, cable, which would uh, allow us to have better access for cellular service as well. So um, that uh, a proposal has gone in for the government to call for proposal some time ago and I think the funding is again come from Canada but, but it's through the government. That um, proposal has gone out with our support and the support of all of all the members of RISE. Um, we did that. That came up I think uh, in the last meeting or meeting before, before our last, it was after our last council meeting so there's no time to review it with you but I'm sure that nobody here is against expanded broadband service. In fact it's been one of the things we've talked about at this council. Um, what did I miss, uh, Deputy Mayor with Tony? I think you did a pretty good job, Councillor Gray. That's everything. That's all I can think of. I mean, I mean there's all the other usual meetings, but I'm, I'm sure others will cover them or have covered them. <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Friesen. 
Um, since last I talked about this little magic, we had the final count for cars, and it was 1,590 that went through. Uh, I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank everyone that decorated the building out there because they did a super job. And um, they are free to go out and take their lights and stuff off anytime you want. This would have been a good week because it was warmer and next week it's going to be cold, so save it. Um, I'd also like to encourage people to check out the uh, town Facebook page. We have lots of interesting things happening on there. Um, there's cooking hints happening, line dancing being taught. Um, there's live entertainment. Um, garden hints are coming up. And uh, I think I should thank Lana because she applied for a grant and uh, she's doing a super job. Uh, it was also the county last week and congratulations to you, Lance. Ten years. Thank you. An old man. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Council Moria. Um, not too much uh, that hasn't been reported. Uh, last week's uh, Committee of the Whole meeting, um, and then some other various meetings where we discussed some personnel issues and, and the like. Um, and I just want to pass on um, a message that I received uh, yesterday from one of uh, my aviation contacts to the Public Works Department for the great work that they did in moving the ice um, after the ice storm that we had here and getting that off our airport back operational in such a quick uh, time frame. Yeah, I just wanted me to pass on their appreciation to them. And that's all. That's it. Uh, for me, other than uh, what everyone all spoke, I uh, spoke with some parents uh, about the Taylor Hill sliding and uh, the want of lighting up the Taylor Hill in the evenings while kids are out there uh, sliding. So we're looking into that and I've been talking to a few of those uh, parent groups that uh, want to be involved with that. So we'll, we'll be chatting with more with administration about that here in the next little bit. Um, <clears throat> as far as my 10 years, I definitely uh, thank you all and uh, thank uh, Deborah Mayor, your words uh, uh, of your congratulatory words. But uh, 10 years, can't believe it's 10 years, but it's it's been a very rewarding time to be on council and meeting, well, new friends and, you know, the three terms that I've been here and some of you have been here the, the, that whole time and we've had different friends along the way, making new friends in administration, staff, and learning the ins and outs of, of the town. We're always constantly learning what this is all about and the challenges that, that, uh, that, that we face and, and deal with every single day and uh, I, I have really enjoyed uh, being a counselor and, and being the mayor as well uh, and, and working with some really great teams so I thank you all for making my job easier to be uh, a better person and, and a person that serves on council and especially I want to thank my my wife and kids who support me in this role and uh, and their commitment, uh, you know, because they, they give up a little bit too, as, uh, as we all know. So it's, uh, it's good. Thank you. Anything for the CAO at all? Mm -hmm. um, just an update on the sliding hill. So we've been doing research on that. And we made more sense to put up a, like a dust and dawn light. So we're just researching that because there is there's concerns, even not just in the winter. Yeah. Um, so looking at that and pricing that up because the lights to run the dark brown ones are expensive and hard to get. So we're just in the process of that and they have something very soon. Good. Um, and as Councillor Friesen said, yeah, check out the Town of Summer Direct on our Facebook page. Lots of great things coming up. They're just posting videos twice a week, so make sure you check those out. You know, on the lights, I just kind of thought, you know, we, we replaced the lights at the back of the building room with LED lights. And around that area down, uh, they do have other lights that come on all the time. And they're the older style. Perhaps if they were replaced with those LED lights, that might be enough light. And, and we're exploring that. We're <coughs> that's already there, that kind of thing. So we're coming up with a plan that okay. makes sense. All right. Thank you for doing that. 
Okay, moving on, uh, 8.1. Result of the Town of Swanner, 2021. Schedule of fees and charges be approved. Moved by Councilor Delorier, second by Councilor Morio. Discussion? Can this go to the you want to table this then? Yeah. Councillor Gray is asking that to have a table, so then we'll have this table and we'll discuss it at our next call meeting. Result of the 2021 Swan Valley Municipal and Airport Commission budget be received. Moved by Councillor White, second by Deputy Mayor Tony. Discussion? Any questions, any comments from uh, the two councillors that sit on that uh, commission? Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Um, just in regards to the budget, everything is uh, pretty straightforward. The only thing is that we are budgeting uh, funds and taking out of reserves for um, some fuel tanks and a card lock system. We are budgeting for it. We don't have anything concrete and in place for the numbers. We have some estimates, um, but right now it's a placeholder in that budget. Um, as well so nothing out of the ordinary other than uh putting some capital into the commission or in, yeah into the into the airport okay Deferment, or, sorry councilor morio um i see like uh through the uh your budget uh, last year there was this like a uh, significant uh, revenue uh generated through the fuel sales due to uh um Babcock Canada basing their uh, water bombers here for a couple of weeks. Um, I would encourage either uh, Mr. Poole as the manager for the airport or through the commission to uh, reach out to them and uh, let them know the commission's intent to uh, increase the capacity of uh, the fuel here and uh, make an invitation that the airport is uh, ready and willing to accommodate them again this year. Because uh, it's a uh, Look like it was a significant revenue uh, generator for the commission. So, the more we can have those uh, aircraft uh, based here, uh, the better for, for the community and uh, the municipalities as well. Anything further, Councillor White? Kudos to you, sir. I appreciate this. I was, for our listeners, we made sixty-three thousand dollars more on gas sales last year. So it is a big deal. What you're saying, Councillor Gray. Um, two questions. The first is the assessment for this year, because we're going to be asked to go over the assessment. The assessment for this year is based on the 2017 um, formula. Uh, Deputy Mayor Tony? Yes, I can answer that. Sure. Yes, the the uh, commission uh, reverted to the original 2017 agreement um, based on um, previous um, reverts from municipalities who who uh, didn't agree to that funding formula and it was discussed and uh, stated that we should uh, use the uh, agreement that is in place and that is why uh, the commission has also requested the municipalities to review that uh, that constitution as well but to answer your uh, question long story short yes it's based on the 2017 agreement Councilor Gray the second question I have is what are the current reserves of the airport commission and uh, what will be left after the expenditure of $155,000? And has there been a projection as to the revenues that will be generated or cost savings? I believe the reserves are around 600000 but uh, Terry, Terry can uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Pepper Mayor and Tony can maybe answer on this. Uh, Mr. Benita can, but uh, Deputy Mayor and Tony, you raised your hand, so go ahead. 
Um, I think Mr. Ganita can help me out, but uh, reserves were just over 600,000, less the 155,000 that was taken out of reserves um, and put into this year or allocated for this year's budget. Um, and the third question, Councillor Gray, I missed it. It was another one. If you can just refresh me, sorry. The $155,000 for new fuel tank and the card lock system. Um, I, I take it that the existing fuel tanks, their, their life, their life expectancy is, is ended. Is that why, or is it just because we want to? Do it? No, this is an additional a fuel tank, one, one tank. Okay. And but the card lock is for everything. Correct. And have we determined or set out or is there um, some analysis as to what the revenues are expected to be generated from the revenues and profits? Uh, I don't have that with me um, I, I didn't hear everything that Mr. Poole did say there, but um, this is an additional tank. The idea for the commission is to control all the fuel that is on um, that airport. So this would be additional liters that would be stored. Um, the card lock is to control the um, the purchase of the fuel at the at the airport, um, the, and that would be the only source of revenue for the commission at this point and for the airport to upgrade, um, maintain, etc. cetera. Um, in terms of do we know what the revenue will be on that? No, we don't. Um, the the um, uh, operators that do have their own fuel tanks on site, I don't think that's something that they would necessarily want to share on how many liters they purchase nor I don't think that's a that's something that we would necessarily ask it's uh, just to ensure that we have enough fuel on site to accommodate two carrier or two local spraying companies as well to ensure that we have fuel to supply um, any others that are using our airport example the water bombers as well a um, couple of questions. Uh, did I hear right that we're using the 2017 assessment? Agreement. Go ahead. For, is that for me to go ahead? Go ahead. Yeah, definitely. Go ahead. No, it, no, Councillor Delory. It's to use the 2017 agreement but using the most recent okay. figures. Okay. Uh, Councilor Gray. One last thing. The 450, the purpose of the reserves, just so I'm clear on what its purpose is for $450,000, you have an annual budget of, I don't know, less than $200,000. And we don't have a balance sheet, so I'm not sure what the capital would be. But what's the, the purpose of the reserve? Or is it just accumulated surplus that we should be considering? I agree. I think that's what it is. I think we're going to be it's a, it's accumulated surplus. However, um, to resurface the the runway or uh, make significant repairs, that is not uh, uh, from the number. Some of the numbers I've seen that is not enough to um, even take care of half of the runway. So it, it might seem like a, a, a large surplus, um, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not necessarily a lot, a lot of funds. Okay. Uh, is the, uh, Mr. Ganita, did you, uh, do you agree or did you have the actual number of what that um, uh, amount was in their um, some surplus? It's, uh, what I'm thinking. Reserve. Reserve. I, yeah, the the total surplus is five hundred seventy-six thousand, but three hundred forty thousand is tied up in capital assets. So, what municipalities would call nominal surplus is two hundred seventy-six thousand. Thank you. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Councilor Moran. Um, with, with the card lock there, would that also be the intention of the commission to reduce the call-out charges for 
uh, municipal staff to go out and uh, monitor and fuel the uh, out of town aircraft? Yeah, it would rid the requirement for for town staff to be there during any fueling event. Yeah. Okay. Deputy Mayor with Tony. Uh, I, I guess Mr. Poole did answer that question, um, so nothing, nothing further to add to that. Okay. For the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? Carry. Eight point three. Resolved that Derek P. Wish be appointed municipal noxious V inspector for the town of Swanner from March the first, two thousand and twenty-one. To February the 28th, 2022. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor White. Discussion? Councillor Morial. Um, since this would be new for him, our, every spring, uh, I believe the province has the obnoxious means course that so we'd be uh, budgeting for him to attend that however fashion yes, that is presented fine. this year. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 8.4. Whereas the Community Foundation of Swan Valley is a charitable organization that is focused on the creation of permanent endowment funds, and whereas the Community Foundation goals include the promotion of philanthropy, can I even say that word, in the Swan Valley, sustaining permanently endowed funds filling community needs and providing community leadership. And whereas the Community Foundation promotes the development of children, youth and seniors, programs promotes the arts, cultural and her heritage activities and promotes the enhancement of the environment. And whereas the Community Foundation supports health, wellness, sports and recreation, as well as other community activities and facilities. And whereas the Community Foundation as a vehicle for doors to contribute, donors to contribute their cash, trust, bequests, or real property to create permanent endowment that will build and improve our Swan Valley community. Therefore, uh, therefore, on behalf of the town of Swan River, we do hereby proclaim February 21 to February 27, 2021, as Community Foundation of Swan Valley Awareness Week in Swan River. Moved by. Councillor Fries and second by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion, Councillor White. Well, just a compliment to that team. Man. What a wonderful work, wonderful job you do for our community. It's fantastic. Thank you do. All in favor? Opposed? Carry. Okay. 8.5. Resolve that the water leak policy be approved. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 8.6. Resolve that the contract with Allnet for provision of website services be extended to December 31st, 2024, and at a discounted cost of $4,335 per year. Moved by Councilor Morio, segment Councilor Delorier, discussion. <coughs> All in favor? Yeah. Councilor Gray, go ahead. It seems like a lot for the listing of what we're doing, but I don't know. I, I don't have any comparative. It's 10 hours of annual support. Did you want to comment on that? Yeah. At all? Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 8.7. This is just discussion, it's no resolution here. I want this is uh, something that was kind of been thrown around a little bit, and that is again on the arena use and, and what we feel what we should do about the arena uh, because we know that the um, the hydro, if I can explain this three phase for the hydro actually uh, we 
begins on the fourth of the month. So that means that once we go into the fourth of the month, we're locked into that uh, for that month again for the hydro uh, rate, and that we all know what that number is. It's roughly about ten thousand dollars for keeping the arena plan going for uh, each month. So uh, we've had a couple things kind of thrown around a little bit. Um, I know some municipalities have actually shut their plants off and they left them at the mercy of the cold weather to keep their ice uh, froze. So, uh, we, we only, uh, this is really, this is not an easy decision that we're gonna talk about, it, but I think it's important to have a discussion about it if we decide that we're gonna just leave it be and then uh, Roll it and, and see what happens at the end of February. Councilor White. Uh, I appreciate the situation. As, uh, have we been in contact with Manitoba Hydro relative to the ex exceptional circumstances that we're facing right now and asking for the possibility of you know, a four week extension and not having to pay the full meal deal based on our COVID issue? And if I say, hey, yeah, that's legitimate, maybe we can, we can work something out. Go ahead. I didn't have a conversation with Hydro yesterday, just confirming like that is the core, you know, what we can do. And I mean, he's understanding that everyone's in the same kind of situation, and you know, we have to kind of make the decision for either this month or next month or whatever we're going to do going forward. But as far as just counseling off, that was part of the discussion. I do. And the MJHL, I believe, is, is waiting to see what the province says next week. And they're hoping that they can salvage some of the season if the province allows them to go back to hockey. Councillor Fraser and Councillor Gray. Yeah. Pardon? If we shut it off now, it's going to be cold. How long, how long do you think those would stay? Yeah. It's hard to say how much air is getting in. Uh, you know, the floor is frozen for several feet underneath the ice, but there's insulation between that now and we built. It's very, it's very hard to see. Who's skating now? So there's nobody in there. There was a discussion with Small Paw this week as well, just, you know, because really we're waiting until next week is what we're doing, you know. You're feeling the cold weather that yes, but there's no guarantees that that ice pops from the layer, then we're in trouble. So yes, it's probably likely that we can, but we're always taking a risk. Okay, Councillor Gray. Um, for you, Councillor White. I'm not sure I heard the answer. So what I thought I heard is that Hydro wasn't willing to give us a another couple of weeks to see what's happening and charge us if we let it go just charge us for the two weeks we used. We do not have that discussion. Is that, a, is that reasonable to ask for that discussion? You can always ask. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm worried that way. All I can say is no. It's a, because of COVID. And, and there. So if we use it for an extra four weeks, they'll charge us for that four weeks. But they'll charge us for four months. Whatever the numbers are. It's monthly. It's monthly. Well, well, two weeks. It's ten thousand bucks a month. Yes. So we, if you let us go for one month, it, 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 there's two weeks. It would be five thousand bucks. We could save five thousand bucks for a full time. Right. Awesome. I don't know. It's ten thousand bucks a month. We only got extra two weeks. We can pay those two weeks. Council White. Council Gray. Uh, if if we shut and started, and how long would that take? We should be able to restart and get going again. The risk is in the ice letting the ice letting go. But as far as the planning, we always risk something to happen. But no, starting and stopping that plan should be okay. And so our our fees with hydro will start um, when we plan to start up. Um, or is there a cost there? That's what I, I, I think it's the fourth. So if we started up midway, you know, it would need to be waiting till the next the next cycle. If we shut it off, and on the 10th of February we said, okay, we're going to leave the ice in for another month or two months, and okay. we restart the ice, do we get a month from when we restarted, or do we get, do we, 
Did they back it to the fort? Did they have to use the power? What do we do with that? I believe it's to the fort, but I think I have to double check on that. Because I think that's a significant factor in case for me. Could it actually be a startup fee that costs more than living together? Right. So, so what, I heard, what I heard there was that you said that if let's say um, we shut it off and then we get say midway through February and then the season for the MJHL or kids can skate inside uh, arenas and all that, we turn our plant back on, then the billing for the three phase will still go back to the 4th of February. That was my understanding, but I will confirm that. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's three phases is uh, yeah. done different. Okay, so I think that we may need some more information and then we'll see where we go, but... So, are we going to get on from February the 4th? Because we only have today. Yeah, yeah we, we don't have time to have more yeah. information uh, in the decision today. I'm, I'm thinking that we probably just leave it. For a month. Yeah. I'm good with that. Okay, everybody else? I, I, I can tell you that I, I have some thoughts on finding because I think we really, if, if, if we have the best open up, I think we need to, even if the MPT all shuts down, I think we need to have that space available. People are so locked in right now that it's really not helpful. But I, I and I think I might have a line on, on some other sponsors who might help us pay for that. We've, we've heard a little bit already at Council Memorial. Uh, I just got a quick message here from Mr. Uh, Prorchuk regarding the hydro. He says, they won't extend it. Hydro won't extend the billing period to allow us to run. We can shut it off and then turn it on at will. When you turn on the plant on again, the reading is based on that spike. It's based on that spike. I guess when you first turn it on. So. Okay. Also, Deloria. If it was my my money and my plant, I would turn it off. It's supposed to be minus thirties all weekend. Yeah. Well, no, but the, the government will announce on by Wednesday or Thursday of next week. I I wouldn't spend the ten grand if it was purely my decision. Okay. Go ahead. Nikwa has shut us down. Forty was too. Yeah. Okay, well, if, if, if it is based on that spike, that makes me feel better about that. So, we want to shut her off tomorrow. Because it is supposed to get cold. So, as long as it directs that button that place up so that not, no more air can get in there. No heat on there at all. And then uh, write it out, uh, especially if uh, I can peak walk. Which is yeah, the MJHL and some portage interiors there. Um, I don't know what the minor hockey is, but uh, I think with the cold heat, we can maybe play that gamble. Temperament one, Tony, you want to speak on that at all? I, I guess I've been a. Uh been someone to take risks throughout my entire life and career and um, you're right the uh, weekend is to be rather cold um, I don't know if I would I don't know if I would take the uh, the chance and pay that ten thousand dollars and I would take the risk of holding on to that holding on to knowing that the weather is is at the minus 30 mark so i i would uh tend to agree with councillor delorier okay did you have something else Councilor? Delorier? yeah mr fedorchuk also texted says the only risk to the ice surface but with the cold temperature there really isn't much risk and robin has done the same thing they shut the plant off and ran neutral so they're 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 playing the gambling game just like what we're talking about Councilor so. great so then maybe take a straw poll and say, uh, do we shut it off tomorrow? All in favor of that? Okay. Majority is uh, uh, in favor of that. So the, the straw poll doesn't actually have to be a resolution. Do we need a resolution for that? 
Well, whatever resolution is shut days from that off. I don't think we need one. I think we're okay. So then they will contact uh, Swan the Paul Refrigeration or the people there at the techs and we'll get that uh, taken care of tomorrow. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. 8.8. Resolve that the letter of resignation from acting CAO Patty Hinkleman be received. Moved by. Nobody's going to move it. Councilor <laughs> Delorier, seconded by Deputy, Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? Councilor Delorier. I guess uh, I was. Sad and shocked to hear hear about this, but I just want to thank you for uh, for your years of service to the town, and uh, wish you all the best of luck in your future endeavors. Thank you very much for everything you've done for the town, Council Morio. Um, I agree with what uh, Councilor Deloy just said. But, uh, I would just suggest uh, maybe a friendly amendment uh, that the uh, uh, be received with regrets. Yes. The mover and the seconder is okay with that? Yeah, sure. Did you fix that already? Yeah. That comes so away. Well, what can I say? That's a, most importantly, you're a wonderful person that you care. I think the uh, extraneous things about being able to an office are, are really important, but your, your, your qualities as a human being are more important than all that. We exemplify those and uh, wonderful work as part of our community. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Ms. Henkelman, I uh, just want to thank you for all your efforts um, to towards the town of Swan River. It's never easy um, uh, bouncing around, I think, from position and, and uh, from what we had to endure as a, as a council and a community. You've held us together um, in, in more ways than you think, um, and we definitely appreciate that. I definitely appreciate that. Um, and, and there have been plenty of sacrifices that you had to make in order to achieve the results that uh, that you that that have been put forth. And we thank you again for that. Um, I want to also say that I that um, our paths may cross in the future, and if they do, I look forward to opportunities with. Uh, <laughs> Oh, that's, that's, that's one of the funniest things I think I heard all night. Thank oh, you. God. So thank you, Ms. Hankelman. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll put uh, a couple words in too, but uh, definitely for all your service, uh, years of service to the town of Swan River from your recreation uh, commission days uh, to uh, or district recreation, I should say and your heart and soul that you put into that all those years in recreation and, and so forth and moving up into you know, the assistant position and then acting uh, here almost a year already. But uh, we do appreciate the time that you have put in, in the town of Swan River and you've added some uh, great things and uh, we will uh, we'll miss you and uh, we wish you all, uh, we wish you the best in your, in your next endeavor. All in favor? Receiving. Under duress. Under duress. It's carried. Ten point one. Resolved that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number twenty seven one sixty to number twenty seven two zero three as listed on schedule a totaling one hundred and fifty nine thousand six hundred and eighty four and sixty seven cents general account check number twenty seven one six one was not uh, was not used due to a technical issue payroll accounts checks number forty eight zero one to number forty eight zero nine as listed on schedule b totaling eighty one thousand eight hundred and sixty two 
and 66 cents. Direct deposits as listed on Schedule C, totaling $700. Direct deposit as per Schedule D for the amount of $272,273. Direct deposit as per Schedule E for the amount of $79,000. $51.15. Moved by Councilor Morio, second by Councilor Gray. Discussion. No discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Let's carry. 10.2. Resolve that the Swan Valley Municipal Airport Commission 2021 Municipal Levy in the amount of $29,540 be approved for payment. Moved by Councillor Deputy Mayor Tony, seconded by Councillor Gray. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Let's carry. 10.3. Whereas sections 326 of the Municipal Act provides that a municipality may impose supplementary taxes and subsections 306 and 306.1 provide that a municipality may cancel or reduce taxes upon receipt of, of assessment alterations from Manitoba Assessment Services. Therefore, be it resolved that the assessment alterations by Manitoba Assessment Services on January the 25th, 2021 be made to the 2021 property and business tax rolls with the resulting increases totaling $836.79 and the resulting reductions totaling $914.09. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Let's carry. 12.1. Whereas council gave third reading to bylaw number 11, 2020 in the incorrect order. Therefore, be it resolved in resolution number SP2020-340 be rescinded and further be resolved that bylaw 11, 2020 now be read a third time and passed. Before discussion or voting on this, I declare a conflict. I won't absent myself from the discussion or the vote but I will neither participate in the discussion nor participate in the vote, and I'd like that recorded in the minutes. Okay, thank you, Councillor Gray. Uh, moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion, Councillor Delorier. Since this is third reading, it'll have to be a recorded oh, vote. That's right, thank you. Recorded vote, and Councillor Gray will abstain, or have been removed from the vote, I should say. Any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 12. Resolve the pursuance of sections 152.3 of the Municipal Act. Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. Uh, we have uh, a personal item, personnel item, and also the watershed shed district. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen. All in favor? It's carried. We're in Canada.